Thank you, good afternoon everybody. As mentioned, Paul Ennis from West Midlands Police. I'm a stolen vehicle examiner uh, and day-to-day -day police officer. Um, I specialise in stolen vehicles because that's something that's of interest to me. So it's not just motorhomes, caravans, but motorcycles, plants and HGVs as well. Criminality is a very wide and large area to try and discuss. I've only got 15 minutes, so I'm going to whistle through a few salient points and hopefully you can learn something from it. The overall thing I have to say, um, as the Home Office keep telling me, is that overall crime is at its lowest that it's ever been since God's dog was born many hundreds of years ago, so you can sleep well in your bed at night. First thing I'll ask, motorhome criminality, has anybody got any idea who is involved in motorhome criminality? Somebody always mentions the travelling community, and yes, the travelling community are involved, however, they're not solely involved. Um, it goes right the way across the spectrum from opportunist criminals right through to organised criminals. So who does it? Well, lots of different people do it, unfortunately. Now, I've mentioned that crime is at its lowest for many, many years, and in particular, motorhome crime is low at the minute, but it is still going on. It's not something we can rest on our laurels and relax and say, well, it's not going to affect us because it doesn't happen, because it does. That particular vehicle there is one that was stolen and attempted to be shipped out via the ports fairly recently. It was um, recovered at the ports on false number plates. And that one, the old split screen VW, uh, that is still outstanding stolen. That came through on a bulletin to me the other day. So it is still relevant, it is still going on. And two different extremes of motorhome as well, I think you'd agree. There's the classic type there which attracts one sort of enthusiast and a more modern vehicle. Something that we do really have a problem with nationally is still the theft of catalytic converters. What is a catalytic converter? I hear you cry in unison. Well, a catalytic converter is a device that um, converts three harmful compounds in, well, vehicle exhaust systems into harmless compounds. Hydrocarbons carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide. That's what a catalytic converter looks like if you haven't crawled under your vehicle to have a look at one. And that's one in situ, in situ underneath the vehicle clamping. So why do they steal these things? First of all, because they're easy to take, particularly on a motorhome. Um, there's generally plenty of room around the catalytic converter and they can get to it and cut it off. They don't get to it and take it off with spanners and make a nice tidy job of it. Generally what they'll do is a uh, a uh, cordless angle grinder and they'll just cut it off, cut whatever wires are underneath and just, and just drag it off. It can cost literally thousands of pounds to replace these. A, for the cost of the catalytic converter if you go to a main dealer to buy one, and B, for the damage that they'll do to your vehicle in trying to get it off. So why do they do it? Each catalytic converter contains one or two grams of three precious metals. Platinum, palladium and rhodium. So that equates to about 0 0.07 of an ounce, which doesn't sound an awful lot. And they need 14 to 15 converters to make it worth the while. These precious metals that I've mentioned, what are they worth to people? Well, first of all, they're generally worth cash, which is usually worth 20% more than any other method of payment. But the platinum is £1,740 an ounce, which sounds like an awful lot of money. Rhodium, £6,000 an ounce. In fact, because of the price of rhodium, they're talking about not using rhodium in catalytic converters anymore and using gold instead. So that gives you some idea of the value of the rhodium. And palladium, £1,000 an ounce. So how many of these get stolen? Between April 2011 and October 2011, 30 police force areas fed data back into the system. There was 3,200 offences reported. You could probably say there's another third on that that weren't reported because people don't bother to report them. 
And many of these offences were multiple thefts. And what I mean by that was if there was um, a show room, a forecourt with many vehicles on, and they all get targeted, it only goes down as one crime number. Illicit drug users and makers also use the catalytic converters as filtration devices. When they're making the drugs, the last thing they want to do is alert the community to what they're doing by having the smell of these drugs wafting up and down the streets. So they use the catalytic converters to filter the fumes that are generated, particularly in the manufacture of meta, met, 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 met speed, that is. Um, I know that a lot of people like to tow a car along with them when they take the motor home away. And the only thing, well, there's a couple of things that concern me with it. A, when you leave your motor home on site with an empty caravan, it's fairly obvious that you've gone out for the day in a car. The other thing that you need to think about is the security of the trailer when you leave it once you've gone out for the day. If you go somewhere on your holes, chances are they know you're going to be out for several hours. Um, so it gives them plenty of time to do whatever they're going to do to your vehicle. Personally, I would say, um, if I had the money, I would say if I was going to go abroad, rather than tow a car with me, I'd probably be tempted to hire a car there, just so that they don't know that you've gone out and left the vehicle alone. Theft of motorhomes at the minute statistically is low, but theft from motorhomes is high. So if they can see that you've left your vehicle somewhere and they know you're not coming back, chances are they're going to be thinking that you've got some goodies in there, DVD players, microwaves, TVs, things that you take away with you for your comfort while you're away. So the less we can do to alert people to the fact that you're not there, the better. When it comes to selling motorhomes, something, an alarming trend that has increased is the theft at the point of sale. Now, if you're selling your motorhome, it could be worth several thousand pounds. How do you get the money from the person who's buying the motorhome from you? Traditionally, we use cheques, banker's drafts, and, and cash is the old favourite. People often won't have several thousand pounds in cash to purchase the vehicle. So I think historically, we always thought banker's drafts. And there's a couple of examples up there of banker's drafts. If you're not sure what a banker's draft should look like, or if you can't confirm that that banker's draft is a legitimate document, you should not part with your vehicle until the funds have cleared. And people do it time and time again. I've spoken to lots of people who've lost in excess of £25,000 on a transaction because the nice man was so charming and lovely and we didn't think there was a problem with him. And they've given the vehicle over handed the banker's draft in, quite often it's not even picked up at the bank initially because they look so good. Several days down the line you get a phone call from the bank saying that the banker's draft is worthless and your vehicle's gone. If you're buying, we don't always buy from main dealers. Um, times of austerity, we need to save a few quid wherever we can. Private sales are often very attractive. Um, it's, again, it's a case of checking documents to make sure that the documents are what they purport to be. It's worth thinking about how do we know that the document that the person is giving to us in relation to that vehicle is a legitimate document. In the last two months we've had something like, not on motorhomes, but something like £200,000 worth of stolen cars back that came with MOTs, um, V5 documents, service histories, all of which were fake. So if you're parting with your hard-earned cash, and it is hard-earned cash, I would say that you need to do a little bit more than just looking at the document. We need to check document reference numbers uh, via Swansea and things like that just to confirm that the documents are legitimate. Because it does go on. Criminals make an awful lot of money. They're willing to invest a little bit of money to make sure that they get the sale. So things like service documents, contact the garage or the provider that has done the service, it should be stamped in the book and ask them have they done it on that vehicle. It's only a phone call but it might save you a lot of money. The other thing I'm recommending to people that they do, um, whether you're buying or selling, is take photographs of the person that comes to do the deal with you. For two reasons, A, I would love to have photographs of all the criminals that I'm looking for because it would make life easy for me. But secondly, when you ask somebody can you take their photograph, you will get an initial reaction from them. And if they don't want the photograph taken, chances are there's a reason for that. And if they don't want the photograph taken, I'd suggest walk away from them.
we all, or nearly all, lots of us have mobile phones now that have the facility for taking reasonable quality photographs. So for the sake of a few seconds, just to gauge them, ask them if you can take a photo. So theft of, theft of motorhomes is still statistically low. Although, speaking to Stuart earlier on, uh, there is an alarming spike this year in particular uh, with touring caravans. It looks as though it's going to be somewhere around the 15% mark as an increase in theft of. So it, it could well be creeping up a little bit. There's no exact data in connection with motorhomes because not all motorhomes are registered as a motorhome. They can be registered as a van or another vehicle type or even when they come off the production line, they can come off as a flatbed. Um, so it's difficult to judge it exactly. But looking at the premium data, I would say that it's still fairly low for motorhomes for the premium on your insurance. The other thing that's helped significantly is tracking systems. Most vehicles in the UK, uh, or designed for the UK market, have to have a immobiliser fitted. It's generally fitted via the key, so it does make them difficult to steal. The bad side to that is that when the criminals target a motorhome, they know they need the key, and one way or the other they're going to have to get it, whether it's breaking into your house or um, using other violent means to get the keys off you when you're out and about. The obvious thing to say with that is don't do what my mum does and hang the keys up on a hook inside the door. So if you do, I can remember years ago having forgotten my keys, trying to get back in the house without alerting mum and dad that I'd been out later than I should have done, is reaching through the, the door and trying to hook them off the wall or something like that. Um, it still goes on, it still happens. Um, fishing for keys, lock them in a drawer somewhere out of sight. Theft from, rising statistics. Uh, the criminals know that the motorhome is difficult to take. They know that it's easy to get into. Why they make a £25,000 vehicle and put £2.50 door locks and window locks on there is absolutely beyond me. And I beg you, if you are going to negotiate to buy a new van, please ask about perimeter security for the vehicle, so door locks and window locks, because they're the weakest point on the vehicles. So we've got rising statistics of theft from, because the ne'er-do-wells and the creatures of the night know that you have nice things in the vehicles when you park up. People are fitting safes, which is a good idea for valuables. But again, remember, wherever the safe is mounted, it needs to be to a substantial part of the chassis of the vehicle. So it's no good just screwing it to the leg of the bed or something like that, because they just pull that off. So safes are good if you buy one. Just think about where you're going to put it so that they can't get it away. There is a perception of high value, um, and certainly some of the the ne'er-do-wells that I've spoken to have said these people are asking for it, they've got loads of money. And that's the sort of general outlook on life they have. If you've got 50 pence more than them, irrespective of the fact that you've had to work hard to earn it, they think you're fair game. Please don't leave your goods on view when you go out. And it sounds ridiculous to say it, but I think we've all been guilty of it, and I certainly have. Uh, back in the good old days with the caravan, we'd have the TV set up and everything, so when the kids came back, it was all ready to go for them. But you can see them so easily. You can walk, th you know, you can walk through a site and just look in through the windows. So put the blinds down, shut the curtains, whatever you have to do, just hide what you've got inside. This, um, this vagabond here, this dreadful thief, is actually my sergeant, bless him, who's now retired. He hasn't taken up criminality in his retirement. We did these photographs as a bit of a, a show thing. So you don't need to go to any elaborate lengths, but please postcode whatever you can of your TVs, videos, etc., etc. I always say to people, another good thing to do is on the inside of cupboard doors with a marker pen, put the last six numbers of your chassis number for the vehicle. It won't make any difference to the resale value of it because the chassis number will always remain the same. But it does make it extremely awkward if a criminal has to go around and change every cupboard door and every bit of wood in the, in the vehicle because you've written on it with a marker pen. It'll put them off. They don't want to be caught. They're basically lazy uh, people who are trying to make an easy living and they don't want the aggravation of having to do extra work. So the more awkward you can make it for them, the better. And the flip side of the coin is the easier you will make it for police officers to get a conviction. Etching, same sort of thing. Um, if it's not possible to do it with a marker pen, please, please etch your goods somewhere where it won't 
deter from the beauty of the item, so underneath or something like that where it can't be seen. Time and time again, I've stop people who've had goods, I know that the property doesn't belong to them because sometimes they can't even explain what it is, um, but I've got no way of IDing it back to who lost it, which is incredibly frustrating. The onus is on us to prove guilt. The last thing I want to do is let these people go with your goods, so please mark your goods. Personal attack systems, again for your own comfort when you're in the vehicle. They can be wired into alarm systems. You can have pull cords that will activate a bell or something screaming. Your external items that are often on racks or on the roof of the vehicle. And on windows, there's devices that are available very, very cheaply that will emit an audible warning sound if somebody opens the windows while you're in the vehicle. Reiterate, crime is at an all-time low. Was it police fire they used to say something like sleep well or keep them peeled or something like that? Please don't be over alarmed. Crime is at an all time low. According to all the temporal analysis charts that I look at, we've never had it so good. So do try and relax and enjoy your, your vehicles and your leisure time. Thanks for your time. There's a website address if you do want any more information on security uh, in vehicles. And that's there, I won't read that out, you can jot that down if you want that and you're more than welcome to go on there and have a look. Thank you.